Guys, I, I think it's time to have the conversation. I didn't want to have it so soon, but I do think it's time to have the conversation. Special purpose acquisition companies are the better known acronym. SPACs have been spreading like a wildfire for the past year or so. So much so that it has me scratching my chin and wondering why that is. So in today's video, guys, we're gonna be asking the question, are SPACs a bubble? And if so, when will they pop? Welcome back everybody, or if you're new here, my name is Sean Lucas, and for the past year or so, I've been looking at companies and stocks to review, research, and to come up with a compelling argument on whether that stock is a buy in my eyes based on the value at that time. However, in this week's video, we won't be looking into a specific company. We'll be looking and trying to see if the SPAC market is a bubble. Now, starting it off with some info, what a SPAC really is for the people who don't know. A, a, basically, a SPAC or a special purpose acquisition company helps existing companies go public. And the way they do that is, is that they're really not a commercial company at all. Their main purpose and functionality is to raise capital through the IPO and acquisition of the already existing company. This process has helped them get the nickname of the blank check companies in We'll get into that further and you guys will understand that even more later in the video. Now, after doing some research, I found out that SPACs or blank check companies have been around for a while, even decades. But as we all know, it didn't become popular or even almost mainstream until recently. Now, even more on how these SPACs really work and why they're kind of called blank check companies is that the investors of the SPAC don't really know what they're going to be merging with. Or if they do know, it's not until later into the process. Now, what I found cool about the money being raised through the, the IPO process is that the money, the capital, is actually placed into an interest-bearing trust account and it cannot be dispersed until the acquisition is final. Or back to the SPAC IPO investors if the merger doesn't go through and, it, and the SPAC gets liquidated. And they basically have a two-year clock to get the deal done. Otherwise, uh, you know, it defaults into liquidation from my understanding. Now, some of the advantages of going public through the SPAC process is that the private company could actually receive more money than if they went the more traditional way. And it's even faster. So it's like having an older brother who can, you know, walk you through the process and, you know, can has the answers to all your questions so that you can get more quicker and possibly better. Now, here is a list of companies that have gone public through the SPAC process just in 2020 alone. We got Big Commerce or BIGC, we got Encino or NC. And oh, we got Berkeley Lights, BLI, Agora, API, Lemonade, LMND, we got Pershing Squared, Tontin Holdings, PSTH, Churchill Capital Corp, we got Therapeutics Acquisition, we got QuantumScape S, we got DraftKings, Paya Holdings, Fisker, Hylion, uh, Virgin Galactic, and Workhorse. And there's so much more. In fact, there's been over 230 SPAC companies that have gone public in the year 2020 alone which is crazy. From the year 1999 to the year 2020, the average amount of companies that went public per year during that time period was 204 and some change. It's almost 205. So just in 2020 alone, more SPAC companies went public than the average amount of companies that go public in between 1999 and 2020. Over 50% of the companies that went public in 2020 were actually SPACs. And in between 1999 and 2020, the SPAC count alone for 2020 came in eighth place for total amount of companies that went public in a given year. So, I mean, we can see that a lot of companies have chosen recently to go public through the SPAC process. So doesn't that make you wonder why now? So there are some reasons that a private company would want to merge with a SPAC to become a publicly traded company. And it really comes down to the fact that the SPAC has already done the hard work of the going public process. Since the SPAC is the company that is actually public, the private company won't get nearly as much scrutiny from potential investors or analysts since they won't know who the SPAC is merging with until late in the process. Plus, there's even looser rules on what kind of documents and what kind of information that the pub or the private company will have have to disclose during this whole process. With a lot of companies going public through the SPAC process right now, it is opening the door for other private companies to do the same, even if they had no intentions of going public anytime soon or, or even at all. And part of the reason is, if one company in a sector goes public via SPAC, 
it forces other companies similar to that to kind of do the same. In other words, if that private company ever wanted to try to go public, now would be the time since the door has already been open for them and investors are already open to the idea of investing in it. The reason private companies like SPACs is because it's the less expensive, less regulated way to go public. That's right. That's the, the, I mean, there's actually fewer restrictions when going public via SPAC. There's a lot less paperwork and other business stuff that would help a potential investor determine the overall health of that company that SPACs just don't have to disclose. But I think Investopedia said it best. Unfortunately, the explosion in number of SPACs hitting the market means that a lot of dollars are chasing deals of significant size in the same industries. This will inevitably mean that the standards will slip and the weaker companies will be brought to market. Eventually, companies going public through SPACs will struggle to ever match the value of cash injected into them, let alone a return on top of that. When we look at a few SPAC companies charts, we can see a few things. There's kind of three different groups that are forming. There's a group that is just, you know, doing their own thing, uh, kind of just going with the flow and that's, you know, that's Pia Holdings uh, and, and Workhorse, right? Then we got some charts where the stocks was sitting in a volume shelf in a price control and then boomed upwards. And those are gonna be your 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 API sitting at a volume shelf and a volume price control and you know, boomed upwards. You got your lemonade sitting at a volume shelf, right? Boomed upwards and now forming this volume shelf and kinda, you know, consolidating. Your Raka sitting at a volume shelf and boomed upwards. Came back down a little bit though. You got your Hylion sitting at a volume shelf, right? Swoop, and then boomed upwards, I think on Thursday and then uh, kind of was retesting on Friday. And you got your Virgin Galactic, SBCE. Sitting at a volume shelf and boomed upwards. Kind of came back down a little bit, but boom backed up. And then you have this, you, then you have this, this last group, right? You have this last group that is consolidating around the price control volume shelf and that's where it's sitting, right? You got your BIGC, Big Commerce, forming this, you don't mind these lines, they're not really forming, I wasn't making uh, serious lines, I was just showing you around the volume shelf what is going on, right? So, you know, I've made a video on BigCommerce before, but you know, it boomed up, came back down, and I think right around here, or right around there, I was making the video. However, look at this volume shelf, right? It's hanging around the volume shelf, and it's definitely forming some kind of channel. You got your NCNO, right? NCNO, right? It's sitting at this volume shelf and price control is kind of for going in this, uh, you know, consolidation pennant channel. You got your BLI sitting at this volume shelf. QS, what is that? QuantumScape sitting at a, a volume shelf, not at the price control, but sitting at the volume shelf for sure. And it looking like it's pretty strong and it kind of boomed up a little bit, but it's definitely still in the volume shelf. You got your Fisker FSR sitting at the volume shelf. Oh, look, I missed it. It boomed up. See what can happen? This brings me to my next point. Some of these companies have partially gotten popular because of traders and YouTubers. I'm guilty of it. And I believe that, you know, sometimes stocks are either destined to be gradual growth stocks or sometimes those those companies and stocks are always meant to be, you know, hype stocks, trading stocks that people always make short-term gains or losses on. Now, just by judging the charts from these companies and not really diving into the financials at all or haven't really done it in a while, they kind of seem like hypey, tradey stocks. But if we take a look back at that chart showing the amount of companies and the number of companies that went public at any given year between 1999 and 2020, we can see a few things. So after every booming year of record high number, amount, number of companies that went public in a given year, almost immediately comes the record lows. And those record lows come in between the years of 2000 to 2001 and 2007 to 2009. Both of those were really nasty recession. So if markets never repeat, but sometimes rhyme, could we see the same kind of result happening after this past record year of amount of companies that you know went public? You know, 230 companies that went through public through the SPAC process. Now, I, I, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but it's definitely something to think about. However, guys, that is all I have for you on this one. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.